All right, guys. Today we're taking a look at day two for 2.3, which is focus on directrix. Um, with 2.3, day two, what we're looking at now is going to be different than what we did on Thursday of last week, is now everything could be shifted around. So we could have our vertex being somewhere other than the origin. And when we do that, I mean, a bunch of things change, but it's really just two things that are changing. It's our coordinates for our vertex. It's H and K. So if you look here, we still have our two different pieces of um, information for our equation based on which direction it opens. So box one here is just going through if it's a vertical or a horizontal parabola. Um, this is just how we are affected. So in here, again, what we're looking at, this negative is 1 over 4p in both of my two equations. Oh, no. In both of my two equations are still the same. That's still exactly what we looked at on Thursday of last week. That still tells me how far my focus is from my vertex. So once I figure out what P is, or once I know what P is, I can just go from my vertex either up, down, left, or right P based on what that number is and what sign it is, what direction it opens. And that's where my, my focus is. And then obviously opposite of that, negative P, is where my directrix happens. It's just in this case, where my my uh, vertex is, is at h comma k instead of at 0, 0 at the origin. So because of that, I can't just do, oh, well, my, my focus is 0 comma p or p comma 0. My directrix is x equals negative p or y equals negative p. I have to take those shifting positions into account when I do my equations. So again, all you're looking for here in terms of if you're just going to follow through my formulas, it, you need three things now. Instead of just P, you need X, you need, or sorry, you need H, you need K, and you need P, along with knowing which direction it opens. So same thing we looked at on, on Thursday. If you have your X value that's squared, that's still going to be a vertical parabola opening up or down. If you have your y value that's squared, then that's going to be a horizontal parabola opening left or right. So you can see for these, once we know what h and k are, the way we adjusted the formulas here is just basically still following vertex form. So h is my x value for my vertex, so x minus h on the inside. And then plus k on the outside tells me how my graph has been shifted. And you can see how I'm adjusting this. My focus, since it's just P units above my vertex or below my vertex, my focus now just becomes H comma K plus P. Because I'm just starting basically here at my vertex. Whoops, didn't mean to zoom in. Starting at my vertex and then shifting up P units, or if it was a parabola shifting downwards, down P units. Okay, so let's just jump in. I think it'll make, it makes a lot more sense once we actually start seeing some of them. So let's take a look at box two. Box two, we're asked to identify the focus, the directrix, and the AOS of this equation. X equals 1 over 16, Y minus 4 squared minus 2. So here, um, they don't ask you to identify it, but it makes it easier to identify. Start with your vertex. So here, we can see this is going to be a horizontal opening parabola because it's my Y value that's squared. Um, so we can just write that. It's going to be a horizontal opening parabola. Now, these, in a horizontal opening parabola, this is actually your K value, and this is actually your H value. Because, again, your Y value of the vertex is K, so K is going to stay inside with your, with your equation, which, again, you can look here and see for my horizontal opening parabolas. Um, my equation is y minus k plus h. So that tells me that my vertex is at negative 2 comma positive 4. So negative 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's my, oh, stop. Didn't mean to do that. Negative 2 comma 1, 2, 3, 4. So that point right there is my vertex. From here... The other thing that we need, we have, so we have h, and maybe even we can write this down. We can say h was a negative 2, k is a positive 4. We need to know what p is, because we need those three things in order to identify my equation, or my focus, my directrix, and my AOS. So 
to figure out what p is, we have that fraction, 1 over 16, has to be the same thing as 1 over 4p. All right, that's just coming from my equation. So that means 16 has to equal 4p, so pretty easy to see my p has to be positive 4. Just divide by 4 on both sides there. So p is positive 4. Once you have that, everything else is just following from your equations. So my AOS, we can see here, that's in the top line here in my parentheses, y equals k. So my AOS is just y equals 4, which makes sense in my graph. Positive 4 right there. Um, for my focus, my focus is h plus p, so uh, negative 2 plus 4, so that's 2 comma k, which is, whoops, I didn't mean to write k. k is positive 4, so 2 comma 4, which also, again, makes sense because if you know your p is 4 from your vertex, I'm going to switch to red for this stuff. So if my p is positive 4 from my vertex, I just shift 1, 2, 3, 4 to the right, and that's my focus. So this is F, this is my V. And then again, if P is positive 4, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left. And this right here is my directrix. Which, if I'm going to write the equation for that, would be for my directrix, that would be X equals negative what would that be? Negative 6. Which, again, if you look at your formula for it, it's h for your directrix up there, is x equals h minus p. So if h is negative 2 minus 4 would be negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. So we're good. So those are my three things. Um, they also need us to graph the equation. We've got most of the information that we need. We just need to get at least two more points, so one point above and one point below my AOS. And you've got a couple of different ways that you could do this. Um, you could plug in x values and try and solve for y values. What I would suggest in this case, because you're given your y value squared, I would actually pick a y value and solve for an x value. Now again, part of this comes into skill and part of it comes from just kind of looking at your equation, being able to identify some patterns. If I was going to pick on a y value to plug in here, I see this negative, this, this 1 over 16 kind of makes it messy, that depending on what you choose for your y value in here and what this squared term ends up becoming, could be really messy and be a fraction, or if you choose wisely, you could get that to be a nice whole number answer here. So looking at my equation, and just me being me and being able to identify what this is, if I pick a y value of 0, 1 over 16 times 0 minus 4 squared minus 2. I pick 0 because then I'm going to end up with a nice number of my answer because this is 1 over 16 times negative 4 squared minus 2, which negative 4 squared is obviously 16 times 1 over 16 ends up just being 1 over 16 times 16 minus 2 is 1 minus 2, so negative 1. So here, this tells me uh, when my x is negative 1, my y value is 0. Again, make sure you don't switch those around because you picked a y value and you found an x value. So that means here, when my x is negative 1, my y is 0, and that can reflect that 1, 2, 3, 4 units to my AOS, 1, 2, 3, 4 units above my AOS. And then just try and make it match as nicely as possible, and that's perfectly acceptable. All right, so that's box two. That's identifying your information and graphing it. Now, that's going to be most of the problems, but we do also have a situation where you could be given some information a different way, and in this case, we're actually asked to write the equation. So we're told what my, my focus is, we're told where my directrix is, and they want us to write the equation. So uh, I would always suggest just plotting what they give us. So my focus being at 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4. And my directrix 
is y equals 0. Don't know why that's wigging out on me there. Let's try that again. y equals 0. Nice horizontal line right there. Okay, so that's my directrix. This is my focus. Now, I need to know where my vertex happens, which we should know from kind of the relationship of my focus and my directrix being equidistant from my vertex. My vertex should be halfway between those two. So that tells me my vertex happens right there at 3, 2. 3, 2. So the other thing, so that tells us if my vertex is 3, 2, that means h is 3, k is 2, right? That's where my h and my k's come from. The only other thing I need to write my equation is p, which p, again, is that distance from my vertex to my focus. This is p right here. So in this case, I went up 2, so positive 2 for my p value. So p equals positive 2. Here, you can see, since my focus is above my vertex, this is going to be a vertical, right, a, a upward opening parabola. So that means my equation that I'm using, and I'm just going to copy this down from up above, y equals 1 over 4p, x minus h squared plus k. I'm just, again, copying that from up above. I'm just not going to bounce up to box 1 because I can just remember it. So now I'm just plugging stuff in. 1 over 4 times 2, x minus 3 squared plus 2. And the only thing you need to do to simplify your equation is just make that a 1 eighth instead of 1 over 4 times 2. Otherwise, your equation for your final answer there, y equals 1 over 8, x minus 3 parentheses squared plus 2. Okay. Box four. Box four, same idea. We're writing the equation now. Um, it's just that this is given to us graphed already, which I think personally just makes it easier for me because we can identify right away what h, k, and p are. Uh, here you have to be careful because of the scale of my graph. My vertex, even though it goes over 3 and up 1, this is actually 6, 2 because everything is scaled by 2s. And that means this distance here between my vertex and my focus is actually a positive 4, not 2. So you guys have to just be careful with that. Um, so my h here is 6, my p k is positive 2, my p is positive 4. Now here, since this is a horizontal opening parabola, my equation, again, I'm just copying this from box 1, x equals 1 over 4p, y minus k squared plus h. So then when I go to substitute, x equals 1 over 4 times 4, y minus 2 squared plus 6. So simplifying that all the way down, 1 over 16, y minus 2 squared plus 6 would be my final answer. That's all I got for you today, and that's it for 2.3. Um, your homework that you guys are working on today is page 72, 34 through 46, just the evens. 34 through 46, just the evens. If you have any questions, concerns, thoughts, or ideas, as always, just reach out and let me know. Otherwise, have a great day, and I'll see you soon.